Hello, this is Rick Malava with SimplyModel.com with uh, what I hope will be a helpful modeling tip for some people out there that are modeling objects that have symmetry. Um, I've modeled this light bulb here, and um, the question that often comes up in the forum is, I've modeled something and I've either rotated it into a position where I want to render it, or I've uh, rotated it into a position where it belongs within an assembly, and then I've frozen its transforms, and now I need to come in and model some more uh, of this object that has symmetry, and now its uh, transforms are no longer at the origin, and um, I have to re-transform re it. And uh, so what I usually do for... Uh, things like this that have symmetry is I will model them at the origin and I will ensure that uh, their transforms are uh, at all at 0 or 1 for scale. In other words, I've frozen the transforms at the origin and in this case I actually have a keyframe already set so let me uh, let me fix that. I'm going to go to the uh, graph editor and I'm just going to delete those uh, frames that are already keyed there. So you got to kind of get a sneak peek of where I'm going here. So let's say you've modeled this thing and uh, the first thing that I will do is when I'm modeling I I have a modeling position and then I have a uh, I keep a uh, uh, final render position and I also keep a assembly position for my for my part. So when I'm in the modeling position here I bring up the time slider I go to frame 0 I'll select all these transforms and I'll freeze them or I'll key them at this position. Now, while I'm modeling, I never freeze the transforms in any of my parts. I keep the uh, positional uh, translation information uh, stored in keyframes uh, as I'm modeling. And when I'm done modeling, I'll finally take the entire model in whatever position I want to pass it uh, uh, down the pipeline. Uh, and it's at that point where I'll freeze uh, freeze their transforms so that uh, uh, the next person that gets it in, in the line, the pieces are where they belong in case things get get reoriented somehow. And then I'll always keep a master copy of the file that just has the positional information stored in keyframes so I can always get any part back to uh, back to the origin so that I can work on it with symmetry. So let's say I've got the light bulb modeled here and I have a stage. Uh, what I can do is uh, uh, take this part and uh, let's say uh, rotate it down kind of where I want it and rotate it this way. Let's say I want to set it up something like that and let's pull it out of the ground. So I'll go to a side view and also I'll need to pull it this way a little bit clearly and then I'll bring it up so it's out of the ground. Put that stem on there or the uh, screw part on the ground and then just lift the bulb so that it's just touching the surface of my stage. And then I can go back to perspective mode and I can come in here and frame up on it the way I want I want it for whatever render. If I want to take and have that filament inside of there rotated a little bit, I can grab the bulb and rotate it this way a little. And uh, and that's just gorgeous. So we'll set it just like that. Maybe go back a little bit. So there you go. We got it, got it all perfect. Now what I'll do, oh, see I screwed up already. If I go to frame 2, watch what will happen. It'll pop back up. So you want to move to the uh, frame that you, you're going to position it in before you position it. So uh, I did that on purpose to demonstrate that you should always move off of your first uh, keyframe to the next keyframe and then position your object. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. So let's quickly go back and do what we should have done here. So turn it this way, go to a side view, and of course we have to move it this way, and we have to move it up to the stem. And then we have to move this up to the, to the top there. And then we come back out here, and there we go, right where we want it to be. And uh, once again, we did that little rotation here. So now we're on frame two. We've got it rotated and positioned the way we want it for our for our shot. Uh, remember, you can always bookmark your the way your cameras are framed up here. Uh, so you can get back to this exact framing. But right now, while it's in, in uh, uh, frame 2 and I've got it positioned the way I want once again I can grab all of these <coughs> attributes and I can come up here and I can key them so now I have a key in frame 2 and I can go back to frame 1 and frame 2 frame 1 and frame 2 so I can always get back to my modeling so I you know I'm in frame 2 and I uh, render it 
And there you go, it's finished rendering, and I look at the render and it looks okay, and I say, I like it, but I realize that this stem, this glass part in the center that has the uh, 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 the common wire and the hot wire coming out of, and then these two little support posts, isn't actually perfectly round, it's it's sort of squished. So now I need to edit it. Edit it. And here's the beauty, I can go back to, to frame one, boom. I can come in here, let's turn off the... Film gate. I'll go into select the stem, and I can isolate it, and I can come in here, and I can pick these verts, and I can go to scale, and then from the side I can scale them down so that they're sort of the way they are in the real light bulb where they're squished, and then I can come back out here and go to object mode, and there you go. Now they're good. They're good. The, all the pieces are correct and that shape is better and now I can go back to frame 2 and if I wanted I could render I could make another render uh, uh, at this point you can also have a third state remember if you move the keyframe it maintains whatever the last frame it was in so move the keyframe or the actual animation frame before you make any changes now you can come in take the light bulb and you can move it to some other location if it was part of an assembly and you could key its position there and then you could get back to any of those three positions uh, and you can do this for as many different uh, positions as you want to keep and then you just remember to never change or freeze the transforms on your model until uh, until you're done so you don't lose any of these uh, any of these keyed states in this way you can hop back between you know hop back and forth between either it's a, a reference position uh, its modeling reference position or you can go to its uh, 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 rendering pose or you can go to a uh, yet another uh, another position if it was part of an assembly and I can key these and now I can now I can switch to any of three different positions while I'm modeling and I can always <coughs> simply get back <coughs> to to frame one and uh, of course you can do this for uh, multiple parts that are, have symmetry within within a model just just as easy uh, you just have to remember if you have multiple parts that you've keyed it at, at frame one when you hit frame one all the things you've keyed are gonna pop back to frame one and be on top of each other so uh, what I do for that is I'll either isolate the piece work on it isolate in isolation mode so I don't see all the other pieces that are stacked here at the origin in the modeling position or you could but this can become confusing you could say at position at key keyframe four you could take uh, the next part that you want to model with symmetry and uh, and freeze its position at zero so when you're in keyframe four only that thing pops down to zero but that can start to become confusing with lots of parts so generally I just like to work with these first three keyframes as I'm modeling I keep the first frame as my modeling pose the second frame is my generally my positional pose uh, for the part if it if it's part of an assembly and uh, the third frame I keep for my uh, uh, rendering pose so there you go. I hope uh, you guys find this helpful when you're modeling parts with symmetry. Thanks a lot for watching.